Energy prices are just soaring right now. Depending on where you live, you've probably seen price hikes for natural gas and electricity. And it got me thinking about something I installed on my house, the EcoFlow Smart Home Panel. Now, after six months, I have all the data and I wanted to share with you how it saved our house and powered it during an eight hour power outage, how it produces electricity and saves us money and how it might be something that you're interested in depending on your use case. All that and more. I'm Ricky and this is Tuba Da Vinci. So why would you want to consider something like a smart home panel from EcoFlow? Well, first, emergency preparedness. This battery, you can have it charge up and be ready in the event of a power outage to jump and empower your house. Between the two batteries, you can power over 6,000 watts, almost any appliance you can think of. Now, obviously you want to be very frugal because you don't know how long you have to power your house without the grid. So, you know, keep that in mind, but you could power your entire house and we have. Our worst outage was about eight hours. Power just went out. It was a nice day. It wasn't really weather related. It doesn't really make sense here in San Diego, but go figure, we had no power. Now, our office, our entire company runs out of this building right here. All of our editors, the writing, all of it happens right here. And we didn't miss a beat. We just kept running the company. We didn't even notice the power was out. I had to tell the team because the main house over here didn't have power. We don't have a battery for that house just yet. We went EcoFlow for the office and we're really glad we did. So emergency preparedness, it could really make a ton of sense for you. The second would be time of use billing and energy arbitrage. So if you have power prices that are different during the day, this could save you a ton of money. For example, if you pay a lot less electricity prices from midnight to 6 a.m., you could have these batteries charge up from the grid in that time period. And then let's say from four to 9 p.m., your prices are double or triple, you can have your house run just for those hours from the batteries. That's all programmable in the app, but the real incredible part about the EcoFlow system is when you add solar panels to it. So yesterday we went out and decided we're not ready to put these panels up permanently, but let's just go and lay them out on a little area of land that's not being used and show you just how easily you could wire something like this up. I wanna show you a couple things about shading. You can see because of the trees behind us, this part here is already in shade. So what I'm thinking we'll do, we have to decide about series and parallel. What I'm thinking we'll do is we'll put top and bottom together in series, that way they're linked, and then four bays of those in parallel. So to do that, we need a cable like this. This cable will take in both of the negatives, both of the positives, and bring it out into one cable, just like this. So we would need four, four sets of these for this, and we'll wire it up like this. Brim, could you come help me? So this is the bottom of our solar panels, and you can see these connectors right here. So what we'll do, is we'll take, we'll start with the, this side. We'll just hook them up just like this, okay? And Brim, we need you to hook up your side over there. You can't really screw it up because it's all kind of laid out for you, male to female. Okay, there's a second one for you to grab. So now these two panels are in parallel. We didn't want to do that. So now these two panels are in parallel. So shading on one wouldn't affect the other. They're running in together, but that's not actually what we want to do. That is, that's how you not do what you want to do. Okay. And that's equally valuable. Sometimes it's more valuable. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to wire these panels together. So we're going to go positive to negative here, this panel to this panel. So now Shading on one would affect the other. These two are now in series, but that's okay because the shade kind of falls vertically on them. So if this, these two are in shade from something that wouldn't affect the others, for example. I'm gonna lay this down and connect this one to that one. Just like Lego, it's kind of a, <laughs> it's kind of a puzzle. So now we can put this panel back down and I'll come over, put this underneath here, lift this one up. Okay, now over here, We'll connect this to this. Perfect, yeah. Make the adjustment on the angle there. And follow that line. Okay. All right, so the final part of this is if you wanna build your own cables, which are a little bit trickier, and this is actually my first time doing it, so we'll learn together. What I'm gonna do now is measure two six foot cable lengths to run from that last panel over to be able to connect to these over here. All right, so we'll have links to all these products, but first, You'll need a crimping tool like this. This is what crimps the 
connector ends you'll see here in a minute. We'll have a link to that. Really affordable actually. And then this is a pack from Bouge RV. You've heard about them before on our, on, our, on our channel, but they just make these little adapters. That's the male and female lens, and we'll show you how all that goes together. So let's make a cable six feet long. All right, tape measure, brim's gonna cut. So these are 350 watt panels and we have eight of them here powering one battery and more panels back here powering the second battery. This is temporary. What we're going to eventually do is put these on our roof. We've been waiting because we had to get our roof replaced, but now that that's done, we'll move them up there. But for now, we just laid out two by fours and put the panels down. And if you're wondering, isn't solar a really complicated thing and super expensive and require permits and stuff? Not with the EcoFlow system, because these batteries can never go back to the grid. All they can do is charge a battery, just like any little battery with a solar charger you've ever seen before. How about prices and stuff? These, believe it or not, are used solar panels. They are, I think I paid $70 per panel. So eight times 70, you can do the math around 500 bucks for this right here. But what's amazing is for the next 20 or 25 years, I could charge up my batteries using this right here. Even if I lived off grid in a cabin, the power goes out or anything else, all from the sun. And because they're low, I can clean them. It'd be more difficult on the roof. All right, really quick. After a couple of days of wiring them up differently and messing with the solar panels, I'll come up with the perfect solution here. So the EcoFlow Delta Pros, the batteries, not the smart home panel, have a zero to 150 volt input. Now this is important because the inverters in the batteries have an operating range. This range is really big and very cool. It's very accommodating for all sorts of different configurations. The second part, which I hadn't really thought about, is there's also a current limit. I'm thinking it's probably around 15 amps, okay? Now this, this is probably kind of a rough guess, but to reach that 1500 watt total input power, you need to have at least 120 or so volts, and I didn't. So before my panels were lined up like this, right? I had eight panels just like this, and I had them wired two in series. So. I had these wired up, these wired up, these wired up, these wired up, and then these were in parallel. As a result, my solar panels are 37 volt. So the combined voltage was 74 volt, I think it was. And as a result of this, I wasn't reaching the full output. Even though my solar panels produce on a good day, 2,500 watts. Now, the panel angle, you know, being flat on the ground, I would never see 2,500 watts, but still I could tell there was not full input. So the reason is if you multiply those together, this is around 1,100 watt based on this 15 amp limit, 15 times 74. So to reach this, what I changed is instead of having two wired up like this, I changed this up to have three in series. So now my panels are like this. I added one more panel. You saw eight in the video but I added one more panel to get to nine. Now I have three groupings of three. As a result of this, my total voltage now in series is 111 volts pretty much. And now I can actually get the full 1500 watts. Why does this matter? Well, you want, if you're trying to charge these batteries as much as you can to power your house and get as much sun exposure as possible, you wanna make sure that your voltage, your overall voltage is over 100 volt. You can get a multimeter and check or flip your panels around on the back. It'll tell you what the voltage is, times it by two or three, whatever it is, but do not exceed the 150 volt. That can do damage to the battery. This is the inverter limit, and that's a hard limit, meaning do not go above 150 volt. If in doubt, get a multimeter, check the final series connections, and see the final voltage and make sure it's below 150. So the trick is going to be try to get a as low a number of panels together as possible while being over 100 volts, right? Because 100 volts times 15 amp is 1500. And then you'll be fine. But anything less than 100 volts means you will not get the full 1500 watts out in total. Is that clear, guys? Yeah, kind of confusing, but pretty pretty clear. 
So this is what I figured out and you'll wanna do this. So the cool thing is because I have two Delta Pros, each can take 1500 watts. That means I can have my panels provide a total of 1500 and 1500 or a total of 3000 watts of solar input charging those batteries. So it, you could do all this without the EcoFlow system, right? You could go out and get a bunch of batteries. You can get a MPPD charge controller and an inverter, but all those things have to work together. And instead the EcoFlow Delta Pro has all of it built in. So if you're not an expert with solar, this system makes it really easy. In fact, this here we did in like an hour and a half or two hours yesterday. And we waited till today to do the video so we could see the actual sunlight coming in and charging that back up. So the genius of the smart home panel is that you could run all of this solar without the grid or without any permissions from any utilities. These solar panels plug into this battery and this battery, that's it. All they can do is charge this battery. And these batteries, all they can do is feed your loads. This smart home panel sits between your service panel and your loads, the circuits in your house. And what it's doing is it's checking to see the battery levels. Do we have enough battery storage to power your load? And also you can program it, right? We mentioned if you wanted to just have these charge it on standby, it will just pull from the grid. Or if you program it to run off batteries from four to 9 p.m., it'll pull from the grid until 9 p.m., the relay switch over and it'll power the house from your panels and batteries. But the cool part is you don't have to worry about exporting. That's where you need permits and permissions. So that means that you could have your Delta Pros plugged into your smart home panel via this cable here, run your house when you're home. And then let's say you're going on a camping trip or you're going RVing, you could unplug them, take these batteries with you and go on an adventure. In fact, when the power went out the last time in November, what we did is we had one battery powering this office and the second battery we unplugged and we rolled into the main house and plugged in the router, the modem and our refrigerator. That was our solution. You can't do that with a traditional battery. The reason I go with EcoFlow is they make great products and these things are over a year old. They have been bulletproof. I've knocked them over. I've pulled them around. They're just really well built, well engineered. And the EcoFlow team is all over it in terms of software updates and new features and new products and just the R&D. Now let's take a look at the EcoFlow app. This is your homepage where it shows you all your batteries and the charge status and everything else. There's that generator we talked about. And here's a smart home panel. So if we go into the smart home panel, it shows you that we are actually running our house on the battery, the most charged up battery. This is really cool. Because we're not pulling very much, only about 300 watts, 0.3 kilowatts, we only need one battery. And so it'll pull from the battery with the highest level of charge. That way it can lower itself and charge from solar again. If we look at our usage, we can check it out by our zones. So here we have our studio, which has some computers and stuff. That's pretty much the big draw. There's probably one more TV or computer in the living room as well. And then the kitchen will turn on whenever the refrigerator turns on pretty much. And we have a space heater, air conditioning, things like that. Now, one thing to remember is that the EcoFlow smart home panel can either run on 120 volt here in the US or 240 modes. What's really cool too, is I can come in here and just trip these circuits and turn them off or tell them I want the battery to charge these circuits, but not these other ones. Now, one thing I wish that EcoFlow would add is better analytics and data. So here is our house battery and grid. But the problem is I can only go back about a month. I wish that I had an entire year or a lifetime data view. That would be the biggest feature request I would ask for. So we had a very little bit of solar input, but we can still see that we produced 64 kilowatt hours in the darkest, shortest month of December, January. And the grid we pulled 400. So 64 kilowatt hours came from solar and battery and 400 from the grid. And finally, let's look at some of the scheduling. Here you can see if the power goes out, switch to battery backup, right? The second rule that we have is if the day is between midnight and midnight, basically 24 hours a day, run on battery. We do this because where we live, we don't have time of use currently. But if you did, what you could do is you could have it charge, right? You could say, I want it to charge from this time, from midnight to 4 a.m., and I want it to discharge at a different time. 
All right, so now let's talk about some of the cons or challenges that I've had. Remember, I was one of the very first people to get one of these, and there were a lot of little software issues and stuff in the beginning. For example, most of it was around when the batteries would actually come on and power your house versus not. So in the app, you can go in and tell the unit to power off batteries from certain times. I had put it 24 hours a day, meaning run off the batteries all day and night. There were times when the batteries were charging from the solar panels or off grid and it wasn't honoring it. It wasn't actually running on the batteries. It was just pulling from the grid. So I talked to EcoFlow early on and the most amazing part is I've chatted with them, their engineers, and they have rolled out firmware update after firmware update. And now I don't think I've had really any issues in the past two months or so. It's been pretty much perfect. Also, the app had some issues when we were trying to set up and calibrate the system early on. There were little issues on the software, on the mobile app. That's all been addressed as well. A system like this is complicated because there's a mobile app software, there's a smart home panel software, and these batteries have their own software, and they all have to be updated. And this is one of the cons of this system. A Tesla Powerwall, for example, is one integrated system. There's really nothing else you have to do. It'll over-the-air update and that's pretty much it. With this, there's three things that you have to update. So you have to open the app, make sure it doesn't go into background mode while the firmware is updating. If it does, you have to start all over again. So for example, if you are the kind of person, you're installing this for your parents or you're, it's a vacation house, you don't wanna to have to deal with it, there might be other systems that are more built in, you can't take them out, they're not independent, that might work well for you. Also, the software updates are getting much less frequent because the product is getting more mature. I had this installed when it was brand new and the updates were more frequent, updating and fixing some of those bugs that they were catching. But now, you know, seven months later, it's way more robust. The updates are much less frequent and it's not really too much of a deal. When you factor in the fact that I can take these batteries with me, go on a trip, go camping. We've done that before or take them to any sort of event, take these with you. You can't do that with a power wall or any other stationary battery. When you couple that functionality and the ability to plug in DC solar panels, just like this. If you have a patio, throw some panels up, get the bracketing, get it installed properly, and you can power this system all by yourself in like a day or two, right? That is the amazing part about it. But you will need an electrician to install this for you. Now, technically, I could put a smart home panel in my main house and with just the same batteries, move them back and forth and power what I need to. Or you could buy more batteries or everything else. It kind of comes down to your situation. But for the combination of battery backup in the case of an emergency, energy arbitrage where you can power your house and charge and discharge at different times, and being able to charge it with solar or a diesel generator, right? They have that too. Their ecosystem is pretty broad. So with this system, I don't need to go and do anything else. There's a generator that I can pull in that we've talked about before and charge these batteries back from propane or diesel in the case of a really bad storm. Like if you had no solar production, the power goes out for a month, you could go and still keep your house running. And that I think is the ultimate reason why you would want to consider something like this. So We'll have links below to all the stuff, including the solar hookup ties and other connectors and odds and ends. And uh, hopefully that was interesting. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, write us below. We'll try to hook them up and, and get them answered as best we can. And we'll catch you guys next week.